Welcome back guys. Let me now show you how you can go from SQL injection to remote code execution. Here is the sequence of steps. As a result of SQL injection, we are going to install a backdoor. And once the backdoor is installed, we are going to launch remote code execution attack via this backdoor. And basically this is how it works. It sounds cool, but the question is how to install this backdoor? Maybe this is the most challenging part in the entire process. And it turns out that as a result of SQL injection, we can save a file on the disk. And for this purpose, we can use into out file statement. So into out file, and then in between the apostrophes, we are going to specify the file. For example, var www.rc.php. So what's gonna happen as a result of this statement is redirection of the output of the underlying SQL query to the file. And now, if the attacker controlled data is saved in this file, then the game is over. Then we've got remote code execution, right? So not only we need to be able to save a file on the disk, but we need to be able to save a file with the attacker controlled data. Then the game is over. And uh, yeah, this is how it works. So it's really uh, great. Uh, and I really love this attack. And now it's time to uh, jump to the demo. I'm gonna show you how it works in practice, uh, step by step. So uh, yeah, uh, let's jump to the demo and let's play with this attack in practice. Welcome guys in the first demo uh, in this course. And uh, right now I'm gonna show you how you can go from SQL injection to remote code execution Step by step, it's gonna be fully practical because this is a demo, okay? So let's start. This is uh, a testing web application that I have to show you how this attack works. And this web application is actually a, an online shopping platform. So what you can do here is you can buy different products and you can also sell different products. You see that there are two available products super secure firewall and super secure lock. Let me now click, for example, super secure firewall. And what you can see is, you know, the details related to this product. So you can see the price, you can see the description and stuff like that. And in the URL, you can see the parameter named item ID equal sign 13. So this product is associated with ID 13 and most probably all the information related to different products is stored and processed uh, by the database because this is how it uh, looks like nowadays. Okay, so first I'm gonna show you that SQL injection is possible in this web application because, well, in order to go from SQL injection to remote code execution, we first have to you know, uh, find out whether SQL injection is possible or not. So this is our uh, starting point. So let me do it uh, right now. So the web application expects an integer as a value of um, item ID. And what I'm going to provide here uh, as a value of item ID, um, I'm, I'm going to provide a special character in the context of SQL. And the exemplary uh, special character is uh, in the context of SQL is apostrophe. And now, why am I providing this special character? Because this is a special character in the context of SQL. And if this special character is not sanitized, then I may be able to trigger an invalid uh, syntax error. And if uh, something like this is possible, then it gives me an information that SQL injection is just a matter of time, okay? That's the reason why I'm doing this stuff. So let me now hit enter. And yeah, what you can see is indeed, SQL query failed. You have an error in your SQL syntax. This is very good from my point of view, from uh, attacker's point of view, because it, it basically means that I am one step before, you know, having 
fully working proof of concept for SQL injection. So um, yeah, SQL injection is possible. It's just a matter of time. Okay, so far so good. Now uh, let's play with the proof of concept. And for the proof of concept, I'm gonna uh, use this into out file statement that I uh, discussed uh, in the previous video. So I'm gonna convince you that indeed SQL injection is possible and I'm going to save a file on the disk as a result of a proof of concept, okay? So uh, let's do it. Instead of an apostrophe, I'm gonna provide the following uh, data into out file. And then in between the apostrophes, we need to specify the file. So for example, var www and test.php, okay? And now I'm gonna hit enter. What you can see on the screen is cannot fetch the data. It might be really surprising for you what, what has happened. Well, this statement into out file redirects the result of the underlying SQL query to a file. And our web application expects this data because the web application wants to present this data, you know, to us. But due to this redirection, it cannot fetch the data. And that's the reason uh, why you see this message. So the result of the underlying SQL query has been redirected to the file. That's why the web application cannot fetch it. Uh, and that's the reason why you see this uh, message, okay? I hope it is clear. So let me now show you that indeed, the result of the underlying SQL query has been redirected to the file test.php. So uh, I'm going to go to example.com and test.php because this is the file where I redirected the data, right? Where I actually redirected the result of the underlying SQL uh, query. And uh, yeah, indeed, you see that it is true. Uh, you see the content of test.php, super secure firewall by super secure firewall. So indeed, all the information related to this product identified by 14 has been redirected to the file or has been saved in the file, okay? So far, so good. Now you are 100% uh, sure that SQL injection is possible here because this is a fully working proof of concept. Great, the next step is actually installing our backdoor, right? Uh, because, well, uh, what we want to do as a result of SQL injection is we wanna install a backdoor and once the backdoor is installed, then we can launch remote code execution. So. Let me first show you how the source code of the backdoor uh, looks like, and then I'm gonna show you how to save a file on the disk with the attacker control data, okay? Because we have to provide attacker control data to this file, but first let's discuss this data, this malicious data that's going to be you know, saved uh, in this file. So the source code uh, of our backdoor and the source code of the backdoor is uh, really nice and really simple. The backdoor is going to read the value of CMD parameter. This is a get parameter, right? So we are going to provide the shell command uh, via a parameter named CMD. And once this is done, then this command is executed and this is it. So this is how our backdoor works. We're gonna provide our shell command via CMD parameter, get parameter named CMD, and then it is executed and this is how it works. So we've got a very um, simple one line um, of PHP code uh, that actually is the essence of, of my backdoor, right? Okay, now I have to somehow provide this source code of the backdoor to the file. And now let me show you how you can do it. As I explained to you, in my testing web application, um, we are actually um, talking about the online shopping platform, right? This is an online shopping platform. We can buy different products, and we can sell different products. And 
yeah, oh, let's uh, sell a product. I'm gonna show you something. This time I'm gonna sell something and the name's gonna be like RCE product. Very funny name. RCE product price, let it be 10,000 euros. And now the description. Description is gonna be really cool because I'm gonna copy this stuff and I'm gonna paste it here, okay? So this is my product description. Uh, and let me click sell product. Success product has been added to the database. Now let's go to the section buy products. And let me show you something. We've got a product, RCE product. This is the name of the product, really funny one. And this is how it looks like. And now I believe that all the dots connect right now in your mind. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to repeat uh, the steps that I already presented in the demo. I'm gonna right now provide the into out file statement and save all the information related to this product to a file on the disk. And the information about this product now includes the malicious piece of code. This is actually the source code of my backdoor, okay? So this is this missing part, the attacker control data. Now I'm going to save the attacker control data in the file uh, on the disk on my vulnerable uh, machine, okay? So uh, let's do it. So this time the item ID is 15 because this is a different product. And now uh, into into out file, into out file, and the name of the file var www, and this time rce.php. Why not? Let me hit enter. You again see the message cannot fetch the data, and I explained to you the reason behind this um, uh, message a couple of minutes ago. Now let's go to our file uh, rce.php, rce.php, okay? But before I hit enter, let me remind you the source code uh, of our backdoor. It expects the shell command in the parameter named cmd. So this is exactly what I'm going to do. So now, uh, question mark cmd, and let the first command to be uname uh, dash a. So I'm gonna see uh, the information about the, the, the Linux uh, machine, about the kernel version and stuff like that. Let me hit enter. Can you see that? You can see RCE product. So this is the name of the product. And right after that, we've got the result uh, of, of, of this command. You see, uh, Linux, uh, Kali 3.14 and stuff like that. So you see a detailed information about the Linux operating system uh, that is on this vulnerable machine. And this is just the exemplary command that I can execute as a result of uh, remote code execution. Right now I can provide arbitrary command here because right now my backdoor has already been installed, right? So for example, let's provide ls and just uh, let's see the files that are out there. I can do whatever I want. One of the files is for example, database.yml. So this is the database configuration file. Uh, cool. So let's uh, now do something like that. Cat um, database, cat database dot uh, yml. So let's see the content of this uh, a uh, really sensitive file. It is here. Uh, what's interesting here is that, yeah, we've got here the username is root, the password is super secure password, right? So you can do whatever you want. It's just, you know, up to your imagination. Uh, I just provided a, a few sample commands and you see, I can do whatever I want. I can launch arbitrary command. And the last one that I just executed was just, well, Let's see the content of database YML. 
and you see the password, I can do whatever I want. Now I can provide arbitrary shell command as a value of CMD parameter, and I've got a remote code execution. So this is how it works. I jumped from SQL injection to remote code execution, or in other words, I escalated from SQL injection to remote code execution. Now I've got uh, the most powerful attack, and it basically means that I will get more money at the very end, uh, you know, as a result of participation in the back bounty program. So this is uh, how it works. Uh, I hope that you uh, really like it. And uh, and yeah, this is it. I believe it is clear for you. So uh, let me jump to the next attack in our course. <laughs>